Good evening, everyone, everybody out there in Facebook land. Every, like everybody in Radio Land, like Radio Land's a place, Facebook Land is a place. If you're there, you're there, and you're here with us. It's another excellent edition of I Didn't Know That, a place where you come every Tuesday night to learn things about things you didn't know you didn't know. And then now you know. Tonight, Gregory Nicholas, our favorite psychic, is back with us. Also, uh, long-lost brother, Dr. Jared Tudor from Ohio University, will join us. And of course... Wine of the Week with Jared Gray, the wine professor from Home Buys. And now, my esteemed colleague, Mike Stove. Bob, I slept through that entire opening. I didn't show one picture. I don't know what I yeah. was doing. Yeah. I was still reeling from the tongue lashing you gave me right before <laughs> you hit the go live. That's what tongue was going lashing. on over. Oh, my God, you were yelling at me. Hang on, we got Gregory Nicholas. Look at that. Doesn't he look good there? Look at that handsome devil right there. Should we just start uh, over? I can, I can. No, 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 no. Jared Gray, stop clicking the buttons. I got him. Ah, ah. Jared Gray, the wine professor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared Tudor, who I don't have a, uh, I don't, I didn't upload what? Jared Tudor. I got to get Man. that uploaded. But here's, the, here's what I got that you forgot. The, oh, Mr. Sports Big, Big Dave. Dave. You know what? Dave, now all I we got to go- do is get him to log in. We'd be great. Yeah, and we'd be great. Yeah. So, well, I, I tell you that all uh, Big Dave is in the house on the comments. So we just need him to get come into the uh, come into the studio. But yeah, all Dave, the uh, so all the, shy. all of our ladies are going to be upset. You don't have a picture, Jared. Yeah, I got to. I'll find it while we're here in a minute. I'll get it up. I'll have it organized for Jared Tudor before he comes on. Jared, I'm sorry. I was just taken by that tie. He still shows up in a suit and tie. I I will. I will manufacture one. Wow. Yeah, I like that. So, so uh, Michael Bananos. Hello, Mike. Uh, Mike will be on next week, Bob. Mm -hmm. By the way. Oh, good. Um, Uh, What's the uh, What's the topic going to be? We don't know yet. We don't don't know know yet. yet. And Big Dave is I mean, in the house. We just don't know what house he's in. That's right. He, he, we're waiting for him to come in our house in his new Big Dave on Sports segment. Um, but, right. yeah, Michael, just for those of you who don't know, uh, Michael Bonanno is uh, from uh, Too Late for Autographs, who uh, takes us through a tour of all Ohio's important dead people and uh, some great insight and story. So he'll be with us next week. I'm excited about that. I love it when Michael comes on the show. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. And Sandy mm-hmm. says, hello. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. And, of course... When you have Mike, you have Yelena, or when you have Yelena, you have Mike. So, hey, good I've to see them, all of you. I, I've seen them show up independently of one another. Wow. Okay. All right. I think I, ex- I could. I, I could be mistaken. To, I don't expect you to take my side. So we've got a very busy show tonight. Finish, as you know, and uh, why don't we get started? We're going to start with um, Mr. Nicholas. And he hey, is going to talk Greg. to us about. Look at that! How hey about guys. that guy right there? The um, famous "I didn't know you. that" commemorative mug. Darn right! Golf yeah. balls will be out next week. I'm excited. That's good. <laughs> yes, yes. So Greg is going to talk to us about spirit protection, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think is going to be very interesting and fun. So Greg, without further ado, yeah. Um, So why would we need spirit protection? Good question. Uh, I get asked that a lot. Because whenever you are doing any sort of work, Bob, whether it be ghost hunting or reading or mediumship, uh, we all have heard stories and seen the Hollywood movies where spirits can attach to us or, uh, you know, latch on or something like that. The, The type of protection we do is to help prevent that, to ease it, to keep to keep the spirits, nasty entities, the negative away. And let me qualify that, Bob, too, by saying right there, the negative or the uh, the alleged evil away from us. When I am working, I welcome in the good spirits, the positive, the things like that as well. But we want to keep out the alleged harmful or negative spirits, okay? Um, and that's what I try and do when I do this sort of thing. And there are a variety of different ways Um, things like this exist. Now, all of you know me and I've been doing this all my life. Uh, things exist. What happens is when you go into this sort of work, uh, unprotected, 
without any any protection or daring things. Uh, you know, like you're in there and say you're in some um, oh, uh, alleged uh, very haunted location and you're daring spirit to come to come for you. I dare you to come for me. Well, you know what, guys? They can. And a lot of times they will. The things we do are to help prevent uh, spirit preve uh, attack or the negative or even draining. Some of the signs, too, of spirit attack or negative entity or energy attack, headache, tired, uh, nausea. Uh, those are just some of the physical signs that may happen right away. Another big sign, batteries being drained. Watch is stopping. Um, watch is stopping. Uh, cell phones dying. Flashlights not working. Things like that. We can do things sincerely. And that's the key right here, everyone, is sincerely to prevent that. First of all, you do not want to antagonize or provoke the uh, entity, okay? Like you go into some place or I dare you, I dare you to do it. You know what? They could, and they very well might. Uh, so, we have all, yeah. Oh, no, I had, because I... It one question that popped into my mind kind of immediately when you started talking about the the negative entities, the evil entities, um, and I kind of was kind of looking for an origin because, you know, my thought, of course, I don't look at myself as an evil entity that, right. you know, hey, once I am freed from all the trials and tribulations of this world, I, I certainly don't think that moving on to the next that yeah. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to turn into an evil entity. Are these are these spirits that once inhabited, you know, the living that yeah. were bad guys here and after they crossed over they were they're bad guys still or are there are there spiritual beings that have always been spiritual be beings yes, are we dealing both. with both okay both bob too uh very good question the 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 bad guys as you put it are people who in life could have been um very bad criminals i'm not going to mention names here but very bad criminals um or someone a lot of times um and I just did an event in, um, in Newcastle, Pennsylvania over the weekend where someone, uh, they died a very lonely death, depressing. Um, uh, they were, in fact, beaten right before their death. And they, in the afterlife, are somewhat miserable, unhappy, haunted. And they look at us as being, uh, uh, you know, someone to take out their aggression. You go to some prisons, guys, who are uh, known to be haunted or something like that. And especially if you're a larger person, especially the guys, they may perceive you as being a prison guard and may try and come after you or attack you in some way. So um, it uh, uh, they can be people who in this life were somewhat evil, criminals, sad. Unfortunately, they may have had some sort of perhaps mental illness. And uh, they, they died a very... Um, slow death or very lonely death and that's what they know and they come back to be somewhat aggressive um we've all heard the things uh, or seen the movie like uh, poltergeist okay things like that there are things we all can do and that most of the time we have at home to help prevent the very very first thing is when you are protecting whether you are going to an event on some sort of a hunt uh, in any of the locations, or you just feel you may have picked up something. Um, you could be at uh, some location where you feel a spirit can attach to you. Again, that's a whole nother topic, whole nother topic. Uh, we all are familiar with the term of saging or smudging. Uh, that is white sage, uh, various dips or different types of sages that are either loose or in a bundle. You light it, and the theory is that smoke, and this is a strong Native American background, very strong Native American and very well respected, where you take the smoke and the, the smoke, as long as you're holding it in your mind, that it is clearing out all harm, all evil, all negativity. Uh, a lot of you may have heard of house cleansings. Uh, I do those as well, where uh, you come in and the homeowner or uh, maybe even the renter feels that they have some something or someone negative or sad, if you will, in their home. And they need it to, A, go into the light, um, B, leave them in peace. You, as the homeowner, have the right to tell them to leave you alone. This is your home and to leave you in peace. You then take the sage, the smoke. You go from the lowest floor up, 
using the sage to clear out any harm, evil, negativity while holding that positive thought. Other things that you have, incense, plain old incense, whether a cone or a stick. Uh, frankincense and myrrh is a very powerful one. I was brought up using that. Frankincense and myrrh, oils of the Bible. Okay. Yes, they are. You, you, yeah, uh, very strong. And you're holding it here to get rid of it. If you are doing any of these practices while you're on the phone watching TV, guess what? It's not going to work. Okay. You're only going through the motions. You have to sincerely mean it. Um, it's, it's just like probably like anything else, any interaction you have with anybody, yes. whether it's spiritual or in person, is you have to be very clear with your intention, I assume. And then mm -hmm. before we get into to, to some other ways to uh, to protect yourself from spirits, um, I, I, help us understand, you know, the... I guess the psyche of a spirit, because it's not the same as the psyche of a living person. There's, no, there's, it it's not, not, it's, it's not the complete thought patterns and that, that we had when we were living. It's a little bit different. Right. Kind of give, give us some clarity on what the difference is about, you know, how, you know, these spirits get confused about where they are, about where, about, about who you are and right. um, kind of some of the struggles that they're experiencing. A uh, couple of different things in that, Bob, a couple of different things. First of all, a spirit may have had, as I said a few minutes ago, a very um, traumatic life, death. They could have been a longtime um, uh, prisoner uh, in some uh, facility. They had a very tough existence. Um, it could have been a very violent, you know, from abuse or whatever. And so they are passed on. And Bob, someone like you or me may walk by and they see um, a very large guy, you know, sturdy, stocky, whatever. And they can may confuse us with a security guard who went in life was somewhat abusive to, abusive to them or somewhat cruel. Uh, they then, in spirit, attach to us, trying to drain us. In their mind, Bob, try, they try and get even with us, okay? It's, it goes the other way. Say you're somewhere um, where you feel uh, a child, unfortunately, may have passed. It could be in a hospital or even in a cemetery. And you may feel sad. Uh, these children may be attached to anyone, whether men or women. It does not have to be strictly the ladies who they feel are nurturing. They feel safe. Uh, many times I get calls from people and I go to their home where they feel they had been uh, somewhere and they feel a small child may have attached to them or followed them home. We've all have heard that where they are followed home. Um, it's because of our energy. Uh, the, the younger people may, uh, or anyone, even older, I shouldn't have said younger, I'm sorry, they attach to us because of our energy, they feel safe. Likewise, the uh, more violent people, those who may have been very um, rough in life, say from somewhere from the reformatory, again, they're life people, you're there, and they just, uh, they're still hostile in death. That does happen. That really does happen. Um, and so there are a variety of different ways they can attach, Bob, and reasons. It's not only the bad. It's the uh, the people who are in good who are harmless, but they, um, uh, for some reason, they, they need help passing on and moving on into the light. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I was going to ask you, too, you know, with the – the good spirits, the well-meaning spirits, is there, can you involve them in protection against some, against evil spirits? Is that a possibility? 100%. That's part of the things on my list. If you feel you need help in clearing your home or protection, you can bring in mom, dad, grandpa who is gone and simply ask to please protect me, keep me safe, keep my home safe from all harm, evil, and negativity. I am a huge believer in doing that, Bob, as well as depending on your own uh, religious and spiritual beliefs. Uh, again, the angels. You bring in the angels for help and protection, um, uh, putting light on the topic to uh, uh, help rid of any harm, evil, negativity as well. You can use uh, deceased loved ones to uh, help protect you in this life, as well as to help take care of, say, a pet who has passed. Uh, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. They and, want to help, Bob. They really want to help. And uh, before we wrap up, Greg, uh, tell us, you know, what we aside from, you know, the the sage, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some other some other things that we can we can do in our homes, you know, right now, tonight, tomorrow. Oh yeah. Um, to uh, to give us some spiritual protection. 
First thing, Bob, is positive attitude. Think positively to keep it clear. The sage, holy water, guys, is a big one. Either uh, you bless your house or spray it. Salt water. Remember, salt repels the evil, the harm, the negativity. People will sprinkle salt around their home or across their threshold or their door to keep the evil out. Uh, salt is there. Any religious metals, okay, will do that. Whether it's the angels or the sacred heart or whatever. Hey, and don't rule out spirits, negative energy, evil. Do not like silver. Remember the perpetual silver bullet uh, for the werewolves, you know, and the thing is, hey, here's the silver bullet that is very strong and um, very uh, in repelling. And yes, uh, OSR is extremely play, uh, haunted place. And um, that's one place where men can be confused as security guards, by the way. Um, the silver light, guys, just simply ask for divine light of protection around you, whether it's gold and white uh, or a green or pink. Prayer is another huge one. Again, depending on your beliefs and your own um, entities, uh, divine uh, beings, you bring them in for help as well, to protect, to keep you safe, your home, your loved ones safe. Um, sage, incense, sound. My goodness, a lot of people prefer uh, drumming. Uh, if any of you have heard of drumming circles, drumming can be not only very relaxing and have a meditative effect, but it can also help repel any harm, evil, and negativity, as well as negative spirits. Um, dream catchers. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about dream catchers. Uh, you hang them in your bedroom or in your bed, especially in a children's room, to help repel the nightmares. Many times, spirits can attack us, attempt to attack us, I'm sorry, attempt to attack us um, in our sleep. Guys, that's one of the big reasons when a lot of us were kids, we had our prayers before we go to bed. You know, very famous prayer, uh, you know, angel of God to keep us safe all through the night. Very big. So there are many, many different ways to do it. But the first and foremost is positive to keep it there. You can be doing any of these things, but without meaning it. And you didn't do a bloody thing. Greg, awesome stuff. Thank you. I mean, and really good practical stuff, too, that we can we can pretty much yeah. put to use immediately, yeah. especially the easiest thing I, I got from yeah. that was yeah. all, all yeah. upstairs. Um, and don't complicate it. Don't yeah. complicate it. You keep it simple and meaning to. You're absolutely right. So uh, before we go, uh, Greg, j tell everybody how they can find you and uh, if they want to do any uh, private sessions with you, how they can, can do that as well. Right. It is on the bottom of the screen right now. I am on Facebook. On Gregory Nicholas, you will see my face. I'm in a green shirt. Send me a request or uh, uh, the phone number, and that is my uh, email right there. Uh, let me know. Uh, right now, I am booked well into November. I have um, no days off. Awesome. Till then. Yeah, it's a good thing to have. But if you, if anyone needs any questions or has any questions about protection, uh, let me know because there are a variety of different ways. But please, when you do it, be very, very sincere. Um, absolutely right there. Um, Archangel Michael and Gabriel. Yes. hundred percent, hundred percent. Gregory, thank you so much for being with us. It's always great to have My you pleasure. on the show. Go ahead, Mike. I, I just stomped all over you as usual. Nope, 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 nope. You did fine. I was just saying fantastic. So I, I always no, love having Greg good. on. He's always fun to talk to. I highly recommend going and seeing him. He's, he's fantastic. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Greg. All right. Take, take care, Greg. Have a bye -bye. good night. Bye-bye. Yep. You know, I just, uh, I don't know. Greg's just one of those guys I just love hanging out with, you know? I mean, I, I could talk to him for about two hours and, and just going over everything. Uh, and, and he's got a great sense of humor to go with it. He which really, really Which really makes it fun. That, yeah, I think, I, is really key. Because, I mean, the way the way I look at things like this, the way I look at, you know, a, a lot of stuff is that is that really, you know, it's not about not taking it seriously or taking it seriously, but it makes it more believable when it's real instead of being ultra like, you know, serious. It's like, hey, this is this is real. Uh, it's something we deal with. And when we deal with it, these are the things we do. And that's the, the great stuff we love getting from Greg. Absolutely. And just so you know, I finally got Big Dave on. I was giving him a hard time on text saying, hey, click the link, click the link. Would always helps, Bob, when I send yeah. the link to the right email address. That does make a that, big difference. That is a big, it's a game changer, I found, Bob. Yeah. It's a game changer uh, to be able to do that. So 
We've got we've got Big Dave Hill be on here in just a minute. And by the way, Dave, I got to get you the schedule so you know you know what's going on show wise. So, but uh, without further ado, we've we got the return. Uh, and by the way, I did it. I did it. Give us the presidential music here. Uh, we got the yes. We have Ladies the and gentlemen, ret- please welcome to the return to I Didn't Know That, Dr. Jared Tudor Dean of, but the graphic's gone, I can't read it. Hang on a sec, sorry, go ahead, oh, Bob. Dean Finish of up. Campus and Community Relations at the Lancaster Campus of Ohio University. Go Bobcats, go Bobcats. <laughs> <laughs> very nice Welcome. Oh, yeah. uh, let's well we got you Jared thanks for coming back I've been after you but you have been very busy on a winning season for young boys soccer and Jared was very quick to tell me that he coached a team that he picked up that was like one in three and they had a three and one season and just swept through the championship like a storm. Got a, I got a picture on over the weekend of, of a very proud coach with his children that he coached. So congratulations, yeah. Dean. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. At one time in the season, we were Oh, three and one and the kids rallied, battled back and wound up uh, getting into the tournament on a last uh, day whim Um, by winning and another team losing and uh, we got into the tournament and won it so I was um, yeah I still don't own a red tide nothing's changed the last couple of months since I've I've been gone but I was very very proud of them and uh, you know what I will say this just real quick the proudest moment I've had with this team all year long uh, was something that didn't happen on the field it was off the field in our first round game on Saturday um the other team only had six players and um, I asked my team if they were willing to play six on six instead of seven on six, which we had the right to do. My team voted to play six on six and still won the game. So they won the game by doing the right thing. Excellent. So speaking of the right thing, you um, are going to finally come on and cover uh, the Biden economic plan, which I've been beseeching you to do for several weeks now. So thank you, Jared. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I look forward to uh, the the plan. So why don't you lay out with what President Biden has in store for us and what's going on? Right. So you start with the fact that we already have one point nine trillion dollars in stimulus money already out there. Right. And most of most of everybody, I think, is familiar with the idea that there were stimulus checks, uh, fourteen hundred dollars going out to those with uh, AGI's uh, adjusted gross income of less than eighty five thousand uh, lots of subsidies for those who um, had health care plans under the ACA and some other things. All right. Now, what President Biden and the Democrats, most of the Democrats are pushing for right now is roughly another four trillion dollars. Right. To be spent in the economy and the way best way for me to characterize his economic plan is really infrastructure and income redistribution. And when I say income redistribution, that's not a comment as to whether it's it's good or bad, all right? But it's essentially just that. So the big question, of course, is what's infrastructure, right? Well, infrastructure, roads, bridges, schools, water, mass transit, okay? But the Biden plan also has a little bit more, kind of an extension of what would be included in infrastructure, right? Things such as health care for the elderly, child care uh, for for parents, uh, the ability to unionize if you are a gig worker, increases in wages. So and, and one of the most important things is a push to get firms to engage in research and development with some of this newfound money that they got uh, pursuant to the Trump tax cuts. Now, with that said, Um, This is where we're battling back and forth between the Democrats and the Republicans. If you look to see what's going on right now, if you needed to cut a deal right now, it'd be about one trillion and it would be for the traditional forms of infrastructure. Right. Roads, bridges, schools, 
uh, sewers, water, that type of thing. All right, mass transit. And I think everybody would agree right then and there. Uh, but President Biden is not comfortable with leaving infrastructure at just that. Uh, he believes, and again, since he's got majorities, slight majorities, but he's got majorities in the, the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate, he can get the other things, right? Uh, the care for the elderly, child care, increase in wages, some of the other things that are not, not ge- things we generally can think of as as infrastructure the biden um administration's argument is that you can't get people to work without child care you can't get people to work if they have to stay home and take care of of elderly parents right we talk about the sandwich generation all the time which is you know people like us the younger boomers i'm not a boomer uh the younger boomers uh, the gen x gen x people and maybe some of the uh older millennials that say you know i got my kids at home but then i I gotta take care of my my mom my dad how do i do this all right. And again, if you think about child care, one of the things we did learn uh, in the pandemic, even though a lot of people wound up going home to work, we still had a crunch, a huge crunch um, in child care. A lot of people still stay to work. Think of our service employees. Right. Those that had to go to work no matter what. Right. And then you have to think about the fact that a lot of these daycares shuttered. Right. Further squeezing right? Supply. So the Biden administration has a lot in their spending plan to essentially do this. Now, that's infrastructure, right? But what about income redistribution? There's a lot in the way of health care. There's a lot in the way of tax credits, all right, for the middle class, the working class, the working poor, all right, especially in the way of tax credits for children, uh, especially in the way of health care, all right? Now, It'll be interesting to see where the where the shifts out. If I had to bet right now, you're going to see deal struck and it's probably going to be close to party lines. We're starting to see some movement again. If you read the news today and I caught it right before uh, the show tonight that uh, President Biden had to cut off talks um, with Shelley Moore Capito, who's uh, leading, who's the senator from uh, West Virginia, who is leading the the Republican uh, portfolio right on infrastructure and and frankly doing a good job i think there's a lot there's a gulf uh between the republicans and the democrats on this and in right around about a trillion dollars right um and, and it's a pretty big gulf here's the good news right and again you think about when we started the show or at least i became a, a member of your show and we were talking about somehow that the politics were really getting out of control I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, a Green Party, a Libertarian, Independent, or somebody who doesn't follow politics at all. Here's where you should be happy. The tenor and tone of American politics has really been dialed down. And when you follow this infrastructure debate, I don't care where you sit. You should be proud. It's The arguments are based on what can we get done? What can we agree on? What can we not agree on? The leadership in the House and the Senate both sides, Republicans, Democrats, and the Biden administration all deserve a round of applause for keeping things on debate and not getting to the periphery. Excellent. So what, what are your, um, what, what, what's your prognosis for this? Where does this wind up? Because I know there's a lot of pushback from Republicans. Uh, so what are you seeing on how this winds up? Yeah, I, I think I think if you're Joe Biden, I think you've got to find something that gets some Republicans on board. You're not going to get everybody. What uh, about the Democrats? Just, what What about the moderate Democrats? Because it sounds to me that these are going to be the key people for this, right? When you uh, get the Kirsten reconciliation Sinema, and all that. So yeah, Kirsten Cinema of um, of Arizona, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Shelley Moore Capito's counterpart in the in the U.S. Senate, both also from West Virginia. Um, they're, they're playing a very, very strong role, but they found a way to find some of the more moderate Republicans, especially Republicans in states, say, the Midwest, the Northeast, that really need this infrastructure. And the one thing I can I will say, um, and I don't think anybody's going to disagree with this statement, this infrastructure should have been done 25 years ago. We are so out of date. This is something that, you know, I... I, I can honestly say was a real failure of the of the Clinton administration to get this thing done. Now, again, I can blame every administration since then, too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's not the only one that's on the hook for this. Um, but this is necessary. We've got some mammoth 
mammoth problems that need to be fixed and paid for. The question now becomes, right, and really the next next big debate, how are we going to pay for this? So, right, so let's say, for instance, the Republicans and the Democrats agree on something. Let's say it's $1.3 trillion. Uh, let's say they kick out the union provisions. Uh, they kick out the uh, care for elderly. Uh, I don't think the child care is going to go away. I think that's probably going to be where everybody uh, agrees because it, it's just it's if you've got kids and you want people to be productive, you've got to make sure they've got a safe place to go. There's no way around that. And we're finding that even, uh, or I should say, especially so in, in a pandemic. But like you know, if if we if we do get people to to agree on whatever that package is, the next question becomes right. You can't separate ec- your economic plan from your tax plan. How are we going to pay for this, right? And the Biden administration has proposed several tax increases, right? Never, and never going to happen. I, I I don't know about that. Um, if you think about the ones that would pro- that probably should be fairly easy. Um, the death tax, right? Uh, the idea is you die and the, the value of your state is going to be taxed. You don't need it anymore, right? And again, the death tax doesn't kick in until people, you know, we're talking about people that have quite a bit in the way of assets. Right now, it's a, it's more than 11.7 million. It would go back down to where it was at 1 million and you start taxing assets. So, you know, the message the government's saying is, hey, if you're young and you're a family member, go earn your own way, right? Go Those, are Those are voters. Those are voters. They, they are voters, Those but they're not vote. that many wealthy not voters. I, I, I don't know about that. But if you think about the other thing, the the capital gains, right? The capital gains tax would, would go up. Uh, the income uh, tax rate on the wealthiest Americans would, would go up. Now, with that Never said, gonna my, happen. Um, I, I bet it happens. Now, here's why. Okay. Remember, under reconciliation, if it's pure budget stuff, right? That's why I think some of the elder care, the the child care, uh, the union provisions, some of those other things are vulnerable because they'll get kicked out and you can't get them through um, reconciliation. Joe Biden does not need even one Republican vote to get that done. Not one, not one single one. Now, the question, of course, Mike, becomes whether Kirsten Sinema, who's in a swing state and barely won her, her seat, and Joe Manchin, who's pretty in, entrenched, but, you know, West Virginia is about as red as it gets, all right? At one time, by the way, the state was as blue as it gets. Uh, now it's as red as it gets. Maybe he would feel some pressure to, to back down a little bit. I I can confidently say that you're going to see tax increases. I don't know where they're going to sit. I, I don't know if Joe Biden's going to get everything that he wants, all right? But in the end, one of the things to keep in mind, folks, and we've talked about this you know, on the show earlier, if you go back to March 2020, all right, We've got nearly six and a half trillion dollars in stimulus out there. At some point, you got to pay it back. There's no way around it. All right. Now, our bond yields. You and I have had so many discussions. Bond bond yields are incredibly low. That means the price uh, by which government, uh, the U.S. government gets to go buy money is, is very, very low. But you cannot extend that out forever. There still has to be a market for your bonds. Is the bond market liquid right now? Yes. Is it healthy now? Yes. Um, but again, if you think about whether whether it's in, let's say, for instance, well, we know in reality you can extend that debt out forever. Uh, the perception is going to keep politics in check. If people get nervous enough, Right. Especially in regard to inflation. Now, again, if you're buying groceries, you've seen an uptick. If you're buying gas, you're seeing an uptick Um, that may make people nervous enough to the point where they write. They're a member of the U.S. House, the U.S. Senate say, wait a minute, not that much. And again, a lot of this is going to be based on that puzzle we call the Electoral College and who can win what in just three more years. Jared, um, I would like you to come on. Can you, if you can come on next week, I would like to have you come on and we can continue this conversation on how we're going to pay for it and you got it. what the ramifications are with that. Because I think you and I could have a lot of fun arm wrestling uh, regarding that, which I think is important, which is important to have in this country um, and have the discussion on how we're going to, quote unquote, pay for it. 
Um, and I think it's, it, it's, it's something that I think people should, should hear. So yeah, I appreciate the air quotes. I'll, I'll, I'll even pay for it. You. Well, Less I'm just going to, I'm just going to gonna gonna tell you, you that's fine. And that's fine because look, when you own your own currency, you don't run out of it. Okay. So there is no paying for it. Okay. So I'll give you a week to figure out how you're going to argue with me on this because when the only good thing that federal taxes do, the only thing federal taxes do does or do does is regulate inflation. That's it. Okay. That's the only thing taxes do or at the federal level, Earth. the only thing that taxes are, are, are good for is to regulate inflation. That's it. Federal government does not need funds to, to, to function. I don't know because if I agree with that. That's one that's tool. Fine. That will be next week's argument. We okay. can we can have week next week you can come on and we can argue this out. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna have to come up with a lot of good things. So Jared, thank you so much you for got your it. time and your insight on this. Next week, round two of Mike and Jared discussing <laughs> uh, fiscal and monetary policy of a sovereign country. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right. Bye, Very good. That, bye. Bob, I can't wait because we get to we get to really talk about something I love, which is, you know, how a sovereign money system works. And obviously, Dr. Tudor uh, need, might need to take some letters away from his name. Uh, see, I love it when I have the microphone. I can and I can see him back there. Cringing That's right. As I say that. So, Jared, you know, I'm only ki I'm only kidding you. But it'll next, be week, next week, to have this <laughs> Mike Stouffer versus Jared Tudor if on the Biden could, Economic if, Plan. And if you could turn that up just a little bit louder next time, that would be so cool. Oh, absolutely. Almost, <laughs> almost <as good. laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, um, I am very excited because we are going to have a we have a debut uh, coming up right now. Um we have our new sports guy on the show, Big Dave Patterson. He's we're gonna, he's gonna be our Mr. Sports. So uh are you ready, Dave? Shake your head if you're ready, because I see you jiggling around backstage. Ah. All right. There we have Big Dave. There you go. Big Dave, welcome to the show. Very good to see you here. Dave, thank you for uh, staying with me and all my technical uh, problems that I had. It's always good to make sure that you send the link for the show to the correct email address. Bob, just in case you're wondering, it's always a good thing to do. So, yeah, please keep I, that in I mind. I believe I sent the link to the proper address tonight. Yeah, for me. And then I, I pushed it out and I'm giving Dave, I'm like, I don't see in the studio. I don't see in the studio. Goes, well, I'm watching the show. I'm on the show. And we're going back and forth. And I'm like, <laughs> What is this guy's problem? <laughs> problem is me, as always. As Bob will tell you, the problem is always me. So, Dave. Yes, Mike. You are going to talk sports with us. And uh, uh, I love your insight on sports. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Bob, how are you doing tonight? Doing great, Big Dave, as you notice. No ice. Oh, no ice. I have, the, uh, I have the silencer on the drink tonight, so. Okay. We're all right. Well, I uh, I do too. I just got my uh, Deer Park water, so we're we're there good. We go. Um, actually, I was having problems with my email earlier today, so I thought the problem might have been on my end. But uh, all's well that ends well. Yep. So now I'm sure if you would have called your email service provider, they would have said that it was Mike Stouffer's issue. Yes, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they would have. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you both for having me on. I appreciate this. Um, yeah, so uh, I do like sports, and I comment on it uh, quite frequently um, on on Twitter. I ask questions of the beat writers of the uh, Indians and Browns for their columns, and I have a pretty good success rate of those questions getting in the column. So uh, I must, you know, uh, ask good questions if nothing else. But uh, uh, I was talking to Mike briefly yesterday, and uh, since we're in the you know the middle of uh, baseball season, uh, that might be a good topic to kick off with. Uh, being you know a big uh, Cleveland Indians fan, and uh, although I'm not sure how much longer we can say Cleveland Indians, pretty soon it's going to be Cleveland baseball team. But uh, nonetheless, um, actually got the game on over here in the corner of the room watching right now. But uh, 
Was there anything it's, specific? It's, uh, it's interleague play today, isn't it? Are, are it they, is. Don't they have an interleague playing game? The car- playing the Cardinals. And currently, uh, the Indians are up 2 nothing. They are. In the middle of the second. They are. So, so the Indians are, what, second place? They're, they are behind the Chicago the, the, uh, White Sox, the White Sox yeah. right? They're, mm-hmm. they're four games back. And then the Kansas City Royals, who were in first place for like the first month, and then the Indians went into Kansas City and swept them, I think, four straight. And then Kansas City, after that, went into a tailspin and I think went down into fourth place. Well, they've come on, and they're only a game behind the Indians now. They're in third place five games behind Chicago and then the Indians four games back in second place. So that's the great thing about baseball is such a marathon of a season. Uh, just when you think you can count a team out or punch them for the world series, uh, everything changes. So it's, uh, you know, each, each season for each team seems to have uh, three or four chapters throughout the season. So, and they say the 40 game mark is usually uh, where you can get a pretty good indication of what a team's going to be like. And I, I think that that does hold true. Um, so I, the Indians have had a, a pretty good season so far. Um, they're starting to get some injuries. Um, and I think the way they saw this team structured at the beginning of the year is pretty much played out. They were going to be dependent upon pitching. Um, you know, you pretty much want to build a rotation with three pitchers strong and then, and then round it out with, uh, the fourth and fifth starters. And, uh, those three being Shane Bieber, uh, Zach Plesak and Aaron Savali. Aaron Savali has been terrific this year. I think he's nine and two or right around there with an ERA around three. Shane Bieber, all-star game MVP in 2019, Cy Young award winner last year. He's been he's been okay this year. Has not been uh, lights out like he was last year. He's pitching tonight. Uh, so far, so good. But um, uh, yeah, so you know he's obviously a top of the line starter. Unfortunately, Zach Plesac had the injury. He broke his thumb, so he's going to be on the shelf for probably another month plus, probably until after the All Star break. But he's a top three starter when he's healthy. So. Um, and then they've probably in the fourth and fifth spots used probably five or six different guys, unfortunately, just because of energy, uh, injury and ineffectiveness. But uh, so the starting rotation uh, has been down versus the last couple of years. Of course, when you have Corey Kluber, Trevor Bauer, Mike Clevenger, it's hard to lose guys of that caliber and, you know, maintain that, that level of consistency. But They've got a terrific manager. Um, they need to shore up the defense on the infield. Uh, they've played fairly uh, sloppy defense, I think. Um, they've had some uh, unnecessary errors. But when you rely heavy on pitching, you really got to have good defense because they're not they're not a team that's going to slug, uh, you know, four or five home runs every game consistently. Um and scored nine and 10 runs. So you really have to be opportunistic on offense, which they have been at times, but, but, but not all the time, actually with runners in scoring position, I think they're um, uh, in the bottom of the league, but, um, but hopefully getting better. But uh, so right now they're five games over 500, 31 and 26 um, and definitely still in the hunt. I think they're only a game out of the wild, uh, second wild card. So how many, yeah. so, so we're at 57 games in 50, you know, we're looking to, and, and so we're well past the 40 and I, there was a question uh, that I've got up there from Mike Bonanno. Do they, are they on, so they're on track for the playoffs? What well, you would think. Uh, boy, that's, it's hard to say. I mean, there's, I could come up with three reasons why they would make the playoffs and I can probably come up with three why they won't. Um, the division's going to be hard to win. Chicago is, uh, they're pretty strong. They got a good manager. I know Tony LaRusse has taken some heat for a couple things this year, but he's got so much experience and had so much success. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a icon in Chicago and that's where he got his managerial start, of course, with the uh-huh. White Sox. So he's, he's done a 360. He's gone full circle. Um, uh, of course he managed the Cardinals, the, uh, Oakland A's. 
So, but and, anyway, and they've been uh, they've been building that team for a couple seasons now. I mean, the it's White they the White Sox that that has been a slow build, and and you know I know for a couple of years we've been saying just wait till this roster matures. They're going to be they're going to be tough, and this is what we're seeing now, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, the gentleman's name escapes me, but they had a top flight outfield prospect who got hurt in spring training, and he's out the whole year. So I can't think of his name, but um, you know they have Jose Abreu at first base. Um, they've got uh, that uh, Mercado. He's the guy who started the controversy with Tony La Russa um, in a route. He swung a 3-0 pitch, hit a home run, and uh, he got in trouble with the manager. But anyway, uh, Chicago's got good pitching. They've already had a, um, you know, uh, one or two no-hitters this year, one against the Indians. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're going to be tough to beat for the division, which leads one of the two wild cards. And uh, the American League East, you know, with the Yankees, the Red Sox, uh, the Ray, Tampa Bay Rays, you know, uh, one of those teams would have to not make the playoffs for the, for the Indians to make a wild card. So it's going to be an uphill battle, but we have the manager, and if they can stay healthy and get uh, Zach Plesak and Fran Mel Reyes back in the lineup, uh, then we definitely have a chance. So that would be one of the reasons why we could. So if, you know, if the Indians stay within a couple of games, you know, within four to six games by the All-Star break, do you anticipate the Indians being buyers at the trade deadline? to try Because they do need they do need help in the lineup. I mean, I look at the lineup right now. There's nobody, you know, aside from Bobby Bradley, who's got, what, six at bats, that's um, hitting even close to 300. Uh, you've got um, Jose Ramirez hitting 261. So... There's there needs to be a little more punch in this lineup. Yeah, there absolutely does. Uh, will they be buyers? I got to be honest with you. I have a philosophy on that. When if you're a marginal team, marginal meaning not like 500 or below 500, marginal on whether or not you make the playoffs. I don't want to be a buyer. I'm not one who likes to. Um, um, ship out the farm system and your good prospects for a three or two or three month rental. I just, because then at the end of the season, if you end up not making the playoffs or you're a first round exit, then you're that much further behind because you've lost your prospects and chances are the guy you traded for is going to sign elsewhere anyway. So right. I only want to be a buyer. If I'm a general manager, I only want to be a buyer. If I know I'm going to the playoffs and I think that one piece, that starting pitcher, or that cleanup hitter is going to put me over the top, then I might give up, you know, one, maybe two prospects, but or in I, the would case of like hate, I would even hate to do that. Yeah. Or in the case of like 2017 or 2016, when it was, the piece was a bullpen piece. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. They, they got Andrew Miller. Um, I, you know, I, I was okay with that. I mean, when you look back five oh, years ago, tremendous. Uh, yeah. The, um, the, the, the catcher we gave up at the time, who was a top prospect, Mejia, we traded him to, um, it was like a three-team trade. He went to San Diego. He's not mm -hmm. even in San Diego anymore. I can't even think of where he's at. I just, I checked recently, and, uh, you know, he was the key piece we gave up. I, I want to say we gave up Clint Frazier, who's been treading water in New York, trying to break into the lineup for five mm -hmm. years. You know, he, he would have been playing for us every day, I think. Um by, you know, at least probably for the last couple of years. So I don't really want to be a buyer. We don't have a really strong farm system right now anyway. No, we don't. Who's who's down on the farm right now that, that, would, that you could foresee maybe coming up and providing a spark? Um, boy, uh, well, they've, they've called up a couple of guys already, uh, Owen Miller and Bobby Bradley. Uh -huh. um, and they've already called up the pitching they have needed because of the injuries and ineffectiveness. So what's left down there to still call up? They have Daniel Johnson, an outfielder. I think he's hitting below 200 in Columbus. Um, so not much there. Um, they've already called up Bradley Zimmer. Mm -hmm. um that really and, off the top of my head bob the, the, yeah that's that's really it and, and really when you look at like nailer and zimmer you know those those two guys have been you know i think they you know a couple of years ago you know the the ceiling on those guys is a lot higher than what really actually has played out yeah so uh, far 
I agree. Uh, Zimmer, um, you know, he he uh, he it runs like a gazelle. I mean, he can track down anything in the outfield. He already had a diving catch tonight to end, uh, I think, the bottom of the first inning. Um, and he, he, he seems to run the bases well. I mean, he's fast. The problem is, is you can't steal first base. I mean, he just has a hard time getting on base. And I just don't know if he's ever going to come around. I don't, I'm guessing he's probably 26, 27. Um, so he, it's not like he's 21, 22. It's um, now or never, really. Yeah. And he's unfortunately had some injury uh, problems. He ran into the wall. He plays so hard, kind of like the Grady Sizemore syndrome. Grady Sizemore played so hard. He just played himself out of being able, being yeah. able to stay healthy. Um, so uh, Josh Naylor. Yeah. He's another guy who I think has been um, kind of an enigma. I mean, he just ha- hasn't, uh, had the power I was hoping to see. Um, the, he's gone back and forth from first base to outfield, although I think he's done with first base now that Bobby Bradley's up. Um, his defense has been pretty average. Um, his his batting average is average, uh, if that. And the power numbers really aren't there either. But part of the problem this lineup has is a lot of these guys don't have that guy hitting behind them to protect them in the lineup to see right. good pitches. You know, Jose Ramirez right now is is probably the only guy um, who can protect a bat in the lineup with any consistency. Well, Big Dave, a great debut. Thanks for being with us. And real quick, because I can't let you go without a Browns question. Browns win total in 17 games, 2021. What do you got? Oh, boy. Um, I'm give me the number. Go... I'm sorry? I said give me the number. Okay, 11. 11 games. I'll take it. Yeah. 11 and 6, and I think that will get them into the playoffs. Don't know about a division, but I think they'll get. I think they're using the expanded wild card again. Uh, mm-hmm. Three team or four teams, I think. So, uh, no, three teams. Yeah, four division winners and three wild cards. So I think they'll get into the playoffs with 11 wins. Steelers dead, yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Big Dave, thanks for being here. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> hey, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was a little nervous at first, but uh, once we got into it, uh, this was yeah. great. I really appreciate Excellent. it. I'd love to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. You, we'll have you, you back. got it. Yep. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Mike. Yep. All yep. right. Take care. You know what time it is. It's, it's time to time. Bring... It's time it's to bring wine time. one professor to tell us about tonight's wine what Absolutely. we'll be drinking what i already drank which isn't the wine that i should be drinking because the wine professor left me high and dry again not figuring out a way to get me the wine of the week which everybody else will enjoy but i won't i apologize actually i'm gonna i'm gonna pass that buck over to mike oh because mike That's is the producer of the show so he should have been the one to to do the footwork on this, I yeah, give it to him. Least. I'll I'll hand Mike the wine, and he can I do agree. the footwork. Does 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 a bottle yeah. of wine survive like a FedEx bubble envelope? Does it do okay? <laughs> Not in this heat. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, the heat. That's a problem. Yes, it's true. Um, geographically yeah. speaking, Jared, you're actually closer to Bob than I am. So I don't know, I know. why you couldn't carry it, drive it home because you guys are like ten minutes away from each other. Oh, that's not true. Half it's, hour. It's, a good, it's an half an hour, yeah. Yeah, yeah good half Bob's hour, an yeah. An hour away, and then you got to stop. I know. All right. Yeah, I know, but if we go somewhere minutes. in, uh, honestly, if we met at the Sheetses at 18 and 94, that's probably yes. a good. What are you, my son? Mis- that's where he hangs out at uh, any mid-points. Sheets. At that's Sheets. That all the time. <laughs> sheets. Where are you going tonight? Well, we're out of Sheets. At two o'clock in the morning. I, yep, sheets. I can't remember. I can't remember who called it sheetses, and I thought it was funny, and I just I've adopted it. I've made it my own now. <laughs> so let's meet at the sheetses. <laughs> so what is our wine this week, Jared? Well, I have a wine uh, this week, but I also am drinking the wine that I introduced last week, and I think Miss Susie is too. Correct, Miss Susie? I am. And what do you Got think? Got it right here. Honest, honest opinion. You know what? Jared, one word, crisp. Perfect. It's exactly yeah. what it's supposed to be. So it's a very warm, humid day today. Unfortunately, our basically brand new air conditioning has broken, broke on Friday night. So I am drinking this nice, refreshing rosé to chill me down. So there hopefully our air will be fixed soon. And, um, and I won't have to only have, you know, crisp rosés and whites. 
but I do have a wine for everyone this week. And I think Bob is really going to like this one. It is um, Carissa Winery. It's their Mrs. Q and it's a Shiraz from Australia. And it comes from the McLaren Valley or Val McLaren Val of um, South Australia. It's near Adelaide, which is one of the largest cities in Australia. And this wine is very rich and deep. And I picked this because we have not done any Australian wines yet. So I thought this would be a great one to pick. Ah, here's a map. So there's McLaren Val. You can see the little map there. That's South Australia. So this is right along the coast area. If you would go north along that coast, you'd run into that capital city of Adelaide for South Australia. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to keep going around the world, and I, I picked Australia. And I know Bob just absolutely loved that um, True Grit Petite Syrah. I so was I, a fan. I, I have an alternative here for you. So this Shiraz, Miss, Mrs. Q Shiraz, is going to be very similar. It's going to be rich and deep and, and juicy, jammy and fruit forward. You're going to get pepper and cedar notes to it. So it'll be very kind of True Grit-esque. So it just, just a little bit different alternative. Um, so I think this would be a great, great wine for you. And we will figure out a way to get this wine to you. It runs $14.99. You can get it at my store. And I will reach out to my distributor and see if there's something in Medina or Strongsville that you could purchase this at. That, that would, would be, be great. a little, and then, little more convenient for it. Well, and yeah. I tried, I, I talked to my distributor with the Villa Wolf. Mm -hmm. I was like, I need a list of someone who's got it in Strongsville or Medina. Cause I, I, I doubt Brunswick's got it and she never got it to me. So I'm going to have nope. to Brunswick, get on Brunswick her about can't figure that. out a way to get an olive garden. We're not going to get any good wine in Brunswick. This is correct. Yeah. So yeah. your, your best bet is probably giant Eagle is probably yeah. your best bet, but and you're not going to find this. At giant and probably the market district in Strongsville and not the, uh, not the uh, dopey wine selection that they have in Brunswick. Correct. Brunswick's not fair. I don't know if you've been to Brunswick. It's not super sophisticated. It's more of a Miller Light kind of a place. Yeah, Pabst, uh, Pabst community, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. A Milwaukee's best community, the Beast Ice community, Natty Light. Absolutely, yeah, that kind of community. Big trucks. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Silverados, F one fifties with really big tires. But yeah. we also lay claim to the um, Brunswick eighties guy which I don't know if you're familiar with, Alex Ambrose, who dresses up basically like he should have been in a Poison video in 1987, and he walks the streets of town all the time. And, like, hmm. you just walk by, like, there he is. And uh, he dresses <laughs> like that every day and walks around, and you just you see him on the streets. And it's actually, in in my mind, he's he's a civic treasure for Brunswick. And uh, we have we have erected many a stupid... Um, structures in this town that mean nothing and i really am working on in my community to get a statue of alex ambrose the 80s guy built because he's he, to me he's a civic treasure it's awesome to like it brings a smile to your face to see this guy walking around town it's the, it's the best awesome awesome I, um, I i just wanted to let you know jared oh what is, oh! It? What is the set i'm Whoa! drinking here? that's a rosé yes Whoa! perfect perfect it, yeah, you. So you have a glass of the Villa Wolf, rosé of Pinot Noir. Excellent. Wow. What do you think, take Mike? Off my Tastes like wine, right? Yeah. Tastes like wine. Tastes it just it tastes yeah. like wine. <clears throat> I, I'd rather have water. Right. I got to okay. tell you what. Somebody asked me earlier today what my favorite wine was. Uh, my favorite wine is Chinta. Oh. Good. And that's one that you brought you that you brought. It's Chinta, and I'll tell you why. Because all the wine tastes the same and it's the cheapest thing I could find and still be <laughs> still be drinking wine. At least you know what you're doing. Yeah. I have no you're clue looking, what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing, but you know you're looking for the cheapest wine that I've shown you, and that's it, and you're you're fine with it. And your mother likes it. That's yes. what matters most is mom likes it. If mom likes that's it, that's correct. Then, then she's happy when I go over and see her. Although I don't know what you're complaining about, because like when I told Jared, not the wine professor, but um, but Jared, uh, 
Tudor. Gray? Tudor? Jared Tudor. <laughs> when I told Jared Tudor what wine I was drinking, he fizz he like he couldn't because he's like, ha! there he is. <laughs> I was like, what are you drinking tonight, Bob? I'm like, nineteen crimes camera day. He's like, ha! in the background. That's he was, he thought it was Tudor hilarious. does that at everything. It's part yeah, of his shtick. Like, he does that all the time. It's like, what are you drinking? It's swill. But swill. Um, I I liked it. It's okay. I don't. I'm not. I'm a very simple. Very simple person. I don't need. Well, I, I think you'll you'll like this wine if you like that rich, jammy, fruit forward. I do but like still jammy. dry. Uh -huh. Yeah, I do yeah. Like, this I do is like going to be perfect. Um, yeah, I, I, you can I'm have this with to hear to taste jammy and dry. When I think jammy, yeah, I think sweet. Well, well, that's exactly that. what Petite Syrah is that you uh -huh. that you liked in that True Grit. It, yeah, that it is a jammier wonderful. fruit forward. It does have that pepperiness. You're going to get a little bit that pepper and spice in the Shiraz, that deep, rich. You won't even be able to see through this. It's so thick and, and jammy, wow. but it's still dry. So this yeah. is going to be great with uh, braised beef, uh, barbecue with a spicy rub. And if you just want to do cheese with it, you know, like a vintage cheddar that's got a little mm. bit of a grit to it or a smoked Gouda, I think would be good. Man, I love the smoke. Mike food. is laughing. Why uh, is Mike you know laughing? What? Because Greg sent me a, a, a text. He said, tell me you're not in your in your boxer shorts. Because yeah, I walked away and Bob put me back on the screen. So I went to get wine. And, no, those are not boxer shorts, Greg. Uh, those are shorts that I walk around in public in. But yes, I mean, continue it's, on. It's been, it's been kind of subtropical out. I do fault no yeah. one for wearing shorts. It's very and warm. Do you, do you, you, did they ever fix your central air? I know that was a... That was a saga from the end of last summer. That was last. That was oh. last year. My air's, air is fixed. Everything's good. That's yeah. very good. I'm, I'm, excited. I'm just trying to be seasonal in my in my attire. It was yeah. eighty something degrees today, and I'm just trying to be seasonal. That's it. You know, you're, you're seasonal, and, and you take a bunch of criticism when you try to do something fun. You know. So well, as we wrap up today, everybody, <laughs> let's uh, let's go around the let's go around yeah, the let's, square. Uh, and let's get let's... Greg in here too for that. If we oh, okay, can. and we'll start with we'll start with Miss Susie. What since, I was, since I was yeah. harassing Greg, we should let him come in. Yeah. Hi, Greg. Yeah, there you go. Good thing, Mike. Right. I was worried. So, Miss Susie, what did you learn today? Um, actually, I um, I listened to Greg and I heard him say something about the importance of a positive attitude. You stole my you stole my thunder. I was going to say the same Ooh. thing about the mindset yes. of how it can influence not just the people you're around, but also the spirit forces around you. That was. That was what yeah. I learned. So speaking of Greg, what did you learn? Oh, wow. Not only to remind myself of the positive intention, but uh, God, I know I, when I see Mike walking around, I got to really lose a visual. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, that's funny. Miss Susie told me the same thing. And <laughs> wine professor, what, <laughs> what did you learn tonight? Well, I, I want to do two things. So okay. I learned, and this yeah. is very interesting, that uh, uh, Greg said you could use past loved ones as a protection. And I find that very interesting and, and very intrigued about that. And then I also learned that Dave is going to be a, a great uh, addition to the show because I love sports and so do so do many other people. So I'm looking yeah. forward to talking about the Browns and the Buckeyes. Learned that as well. Right. And... Mike Stouffer, what did you learn? I learned that my shorts look like underpants <laughs> and that, uh, it's, that Craig is repulsed by that. And that's, you know, that's about it. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for the things that you learned. It was great to see you again, Greg. And Greg, quick, tell everybody where they can find you on Facebook. Gregory Nicholas. Excellent. Well, Thank it was you. good to see you. Anybody, Mike? You got. We've got Mike Bonanno next week. Mike Bonanno next week. We got Jared Tudor going to come back on. Come next back, week. and Jared we will Gray's have. going to be back on next week. That's Big right. We'll Dave have the, the maybe battle, back next week. Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And then next week we'll also figure out how to um, get me my wine, which I'm super excited about. And uh, what do you got for us next week, Miss Susie? Anything? Um, nothing. I'll I'll be here though. Great. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be yeah. it wouldn't be a good show without you. Wouldn't be a good show without you, wine professor. Good to see you again, Greg. And of course, it wouldn't be a good show without 
My man, Mike Stover. It's always a pleasure to be with you here on Tuesday nights. Don't forget, if you like what you saw and heard tonight, please be sure to share it and like it and let everybody know when it happens. Tuesday night, 8 p.m. on Facebook. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.